we're going to learn some techniques for organizing our code, creating code that's organized and outlining what's happening and, and when it's going to happen on the page is a bit of an art form. It's important to place the code in an organized fashion though because some CSS files can have hundreds if not thousands of lines of code and if you don't have an organized way to sort all the various styles that are going on it gets really difficult to edit them later. So what we'll learn is we'll learn some techniques in which we can organize our code. One of the best things that you can do with your CSS file is to create a CSS table of contents. A CSS table of contents it exists inside of a comment and you just write out the content of what is happening on your CSS file. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to begin by making a CSS comment and I'm going to put this right at the top of the file. So this is actually going to go above my reset. I'm going to make an opening CSS comment and place a bunch of asterisks and then I'll copy that and I'll paste it in and create a closing comment. And then inside the comments just like what we did down here I'm just going to specify that this is going to be the table of contents. And this is one of the few times that I use all caps and that just helps the code to stand out from the rest of what's happening and that's because I tend to not use all caps in the rest of my code. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to outline the different areas that are going to be in my code. So I'll write that number one is going to be a CSS reset and number two I'm going to define my global styles that my page is going to contain. So these are going to be things like tags and basic styling that I want to pass on. Then for three I'm going to go ahead and include the header and nav styles and this is going to just contain styles that have to do with the header and the navigation so any sort of menu system styles are going to go there. Then I'm going to have styles for a sidebar and this might change I mean depending on how you're building your page this is kind of just generically how I set it up so on this particular page I don't have a sidebar so I'll actually end up changing this but I'm just going to show you how I usually start then I have a place and again this depends on the project but if I'm doing some sort of content management system like WordPress or Drupal or something I might have styles that are particular to widget content so I might make a section for widget content. I'm going to also include an area for generic selectors so this might have shared page class styles or something like that and then I'm going to place the footer styles on my page so this is going to declare all of the footer content that might appear on my page and then I might just have an area for forms and I'll just put comments here as well so this might have form elements, additional comments, things like that. The footer area would contain any copyright information. It might have social media icons, links, anything that's going to consistently appear at the bottom of the page. And I like to actually indent my table of contents just so it kind of stands out from the rest of the information. So this is right at the top of the page and what's going to happen is when someone opens my file they're going to immediately see this table of contents and then once they go through the site we're going to identify the various areas so I'm going to create some additional kind of section headings so that I can call out these areas so we already have Eric Meyer reset but let's just change this to say CSS reset and then I'm just going to paste in that this is Eric Meyer modified so that I have an area that identifies it and I'm going to put a one here so that right away I know that this is where the CSS reset is going to exist so you can see that I've outlined that up here in my table of contents they see the one and then they're going to come down here and find where this area exists I'm just going to copy my comments that I've kind of placed within these 
asterisk is right here and then I'm going to after my reset ends I'm going to paste this in and this is going to be my second area and this is going to contain the if we look up here the global styles so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change this to say global styles and at this point once I have these kind of sections that are calling out these various areas I probably don't need this little comment right here that says end reset that's a little bit redundant so I'm gonna get rid of that just because that will help to keep my code a little bit leaner and again feel free to put comments in your code but you don't want to have too many unnecessary comments either Another thing that you might want to do is when you're defining these kind of section headline areas, you might want to even have multiple lines of asterisks just so this content really stands out. You can see that when I kind of double this up with two lines of asterisks, this content tends to stand out even a little bit more and I like that a little bit just because it makes it even easier for any sort of user that would be working with my page to find this sort of information so my goal is to make it as easy as possible for someone who's going to be working on the project to find an area that they need so once I have that I'm gonna to go to the next area the next area that I'm gonna put on my page is going to be number three which is going to contain our header and nav styles so if we go up to the table of contents that comes next now the fourth area in my table of contents I outlined sidebar we're not gonna have any sidebar content on this particular website so I'm gonna eliminate that I'm not gonna have that on this page I just put these sections up here because I wanted to show you something that you may want to include and your table of contents can be whatever it needs to be there isn't a set rule for this it's whatever works for you but in our case we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna get rid of that so number four for me is gonna be generic selectors so I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to paste this in and we'll just change this to number four and then number five is going to be our footer content and then number six is might be forms and comments again I don't have any forms and comments so we can probably eliminate that for this particular project but that is something that you may want to include for other projects and you know sometimes you'll just leave that on there I mean this is for you this is going to contain the stuff that it makes it easy for you to design your page and actually now that I have this in here let's actually slip one more section in here let's change this number four to be the main body content so we'll have the main body content display here and then I'll have my generic selectors and my footer and then I'm not gonna have forms and comments so I'll just actually get rid of that so the table of contents for this site is gonna look like this so let me just um, put my main body content in here as number four okay so now I have these areas and if the user says oh, okay yeah I want to find out what's going on with the main body content that's number four they're just gonna scroll down to the page until they find number four and then after this comment we should have all of the main body content displaying so now that we have this table of contents kind of set up the next thing to do is start to organize all of the content so it fits within this particular format so we'll be doing that next and I'm just gonna actually just to clean this up even a little bit more I'm just gonna move this closing comment down here so I'll include the little comment that just says where I got the reset and the licensing for it underneath this line of code that just is specifying what the reset is so that looks great we're ready to start organizing the content and we'll do that next